everybody. Welcome to Arches Build 7, Psychosis. Um, it's currently 2.17 p.m. on December 20th, 2022. 11 days before 2023. And I'm feeling a mix of emotions right now. Oh, I mean, I'm kind of nervous, honestly. Because if you remember, um, last time I had some complaints about how this update was handling um, Cameron. But I suppose I'll just have to see how it goes here. It might um, alleviate my problems, hopefully. Let us jump back into it. What is this? Oh, right. Dead, but with working reflexes, using the tool that it still holds tightly in its grasp. Cameron disappears and these thoughts and feelings are no longer his because he isn't who he is. He is everything. And because of that, he can see everything. Okay, yeah, um, I'm really, really fucking glad that I got to read that again, just to catch you guys up to speed. Whoa, there's an arrow down there. Pain pounds rhythmically in their head, like a heavy heartbeat, making their ears pin back tightly before they begin to whine. Then they croak as their sore throat protests against making the sound. They stare at the scene before them, then they blink. But it doesn't help them make sense of what's in front of them. In fact, it seems to make it worse. Who's making sense of what? That's in front of who? These intrusive thoughts about not existing. Who's having these thoughts? Say you're coming round. Fear rises up into his throat, something deep in his brain telling him to flee that voice to escape from it. But he's still, conf he's still too confused to figure out who or what he even is right now because he still feels like nothing. But he's also still conscious enough to know that he is, in fact, something. He remembers that he's someone named Cameron. He remembers his situation, and he remembers that he's been drugged with shrooms and Xanax. His trip has reached its dizzying peak, his sense of self so utterly decimated that he isn't sure how he's ever going to feel the same again. Okay, so right off the bat, my entire problem is gone. My entire issue, hopefully, is not just gone. Because him talking to Devin might have just literally been... A hallucination on the drug. So, that's gone. That problem is solved immediately. The terror and torture of the past few days has culminated to this. The moment that his mind gives in and breaks and Cameron can't tell what's real, what isn't anymore. But there's something else, too. Despite the terrible loss of who he was, Cameron, this amalgamation he caused Cameron is sensing things even more vividly than he just just a few minutes ago when he'd contacted Dev. Cameron sees what's ahead, ahead of him, but he's seen so much more. In his mind's eye, he looks forward and he sees a myriad of people in front of him. Though they're all the same people, Devin, Brian himself, locked in a vicious, spinning blur of claws and teeth and horrific, unidentifiable viscera. It's confusing, seeing so many versions of himself and his boyfriend, and he turns his head to glance away, not wanting to see that violence. Then, noticing something over his shoulder, he looks back, and this time he sees one version of himself along with Brian. He sees his unconscious body being pinned against the tree for a while long before he crumples to the ground. What? What the hell? 
Okay, well, that was a terrible... Uh, I mean, I didn't know that that's what his voice sounded like now, but since I changed his voice to mine a few updates back, it's... Brian laughs, starring the coyote out of his visions of violence. I choked the fuck out of you, that's what. Brian blinks at the bear, then back at the forest. I... I thought I died. <laughs> nah, yeah, kid, we got a few things to do first. You probably want to see a boyfriend, too, eh? Not sure where well, you get to talk to him since he's knocked out. Knocked out? Yep. Wait, with what? Relax, it's just rough and all. Sure, I gave them a good amount, but they're a few decades old. Because they made them illegal in the States back in the 90s. And you know, when pills get old, they don't work so good anymore. Ryan goes on and on about rough and all and how it used to be the... <sighs> okay. You can read that. I'm not fucking... Cameron watches the bear's mouth move in waves and ripples, yellow teeth poking out from behind his lips as saliva collects and becomes frothy at the corners. Who's watching this? Cameron reassures himself automatically. I'm watching this. I need to save Devin. He's not so convinced by the first part, though. I. Me. Cameron. Simple concepts that aren't so simple anymore. Oh, God, identity. Identity? We're getting into identity. Fucking Christ. Just like in high school, he stopped existing. It's different this time, though. The Xanax is certainly quashing the panic he should be feeling right now, but this time his perspective is from an entirely different angle. Cameron's amalgamation does still exist, but the borders have dissolved, and he seems to be seeping into everything. Fuck. Despite already knowing he's insignificant, he's still awestruck by how small Cameron is compared to the world. Even the bugs crawling beneath the leaves make Cameron feel small, an entire world he knows nothing about. But entangling his identity with the universe means he's also entangled with Brian. I don't like that, that's a bad combo. The bear is missing parts of himself, like, kind of like already shattered pieces and jacket holes pockmarking the landscape of his life. Cameron also feels sorry for him that maybe if things had been just a little different, the odds just a little more in Brian's favor, he could have been a very different person. What's really disturbing, though, is the genuine affection he has for Cameron, his urge to caress and hold the coyote, but there's a hatred there, too. A disgust for what Cameron is. Young, attractive, and a yeah, not just queer like Brian considers himself to be, but, uh, the kind of queer that acts real cute before fucking over the real- Okay. Okay. So it feels good to punish Cameron, but it's even better to watch him suffer, to watch the way his body rise, his mouth open for air, his eyes wide and fearful. Cameron feels himself recoil from understanding Brian's thought process, a way of thinking he'd never, he'd never consider himself. But that thought process isn't what makes Brian the terrible person that he is. Cameron knew a few guys from college who had a similar interest to Brian. During his first year of dating, the In his first year of dating Devin, the bear had timidly asked him if he could gently close his teeth over the coyote's neck and growl. It was exciting. Then Devin had a nightmare about tearing out Cameron's throat, and that was the end of that. So, to Cameron, Brian isn't all that strange. What makes Brian different isn't that he has fetishes. He's not crazy. He's not a psychopath. No, the true root of Brian's evil is clear. He's selfish, and he's never satisfied with what he gets. 
selfish enough to put dozens of young people through hellish torture until they finally die, all the while having the capacity to control themselves. Okay. <laughs> Just, okay. 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 That had uh, no. All the while having full access to alternatives to murder. All for his own fleeting, shrug fueled sexual gratification because at one point Brian decided that's what makes him feel good, so fuck this world that makes him feel bad. Jesus Christ. But he'd found some release in strangling Cameron, and now his focus is back to a vague idea on how to use Cameron's abilities. Something to stop him from spending the rest of eternity with his victims torturing him. You're not gonna get that. Cameron could spoil the ending for Brian, let him know that when everyone dies, they just cease to be what they were. Th he knows what happens when people die now, what? Okay, so the psychic thing is real then, God damn it. I mean, it probably just an echo, but even still, that's it. Ghosts, demons, poltergeists, creations of the living, and whatever it is, that's an echo. Cameron draws back at this point, getting overwhelmed by all the thoughts coming from the old bear, and able to understand them without more context. Looking forward, he glimpses the various scenarios again, and the one constant is death. Most involve him dying, and a good amount involve Devin dying as well. Cameron imagines that that's indi this is indicative of what's most likely to happen. But a few just... Two, in fact, show Cameron and Devin surviving, with Brian either living or dying. Cameron doesn't care much about the latter, just as long as he can get Devin and himself out of Echo alive. They can deal with Brian afterwards. Cameron doesn't even care much if he doesn't make it, especially in this state of mind, because he won't accept not being able to save Devin. Suddenly remembering what he had done earlier, Cameron tries to subtly brush his pockets amazed that the key is still there. Does Brian know? Well, he does know what Cameron had planned, but in his own excitement, especially because he's tweaked out, he's hyper-focusing on other things. He even missed the key being taken out of his pocket. That in Brian's memory is terrible. Decades of drugs at neurotoxic doses have dismantled who he used to be. He doesn't even seem to remember why he choked Cameron in the first place. I had to make connections down in Sonora. Stuff was over the fucking counter there, so was he gonna get? But getting over the fucking border is a whole different issue. Brian suddenly stops talking, eyes narrowing. Cameron's pulse quickens as he wonders if Brian had just remembered his plan. What's wrong? His voice still rough from the strangling, a deep soreness starting to emanate from the corner of his neck. I don't know, I just like you better when you're smiling, but if I'm fucking boring, you just say so. It takes Cameron a few seconds to understand what Brian's been talking about, then a few more to scan the bear's thoughts. In Brian's mind, his smiling has a lot to do with how interesting the bear's over-explanation of Rothenol is, so... Cameron quickly puts one on his face. Oh, sorry. It, it's really interesting. I'm just so overwhelmed with the drugs and... Shut up! Cameron shut up, shuts up. Brian starts to work his jaw like he's chewing something before clenching his fists. Cameron tenses up, preparing himself to be hit again. I am not reading that. Brian's mind flicks through a few faces, but the only one to find enough for Cameron to comprehend is a fox in a red hat. Then Brian seems to relax, but the anger is still there. The, a fox in a red hat. Oh, shit. Okay. We're just getting a... What was the dude's name in Jenna's route? The, the, the one that, that um they were all looking for. Who was that? 
and Brian seems to relax, but the anger is still there, the bear having honed it to become more cool and collected, which only makes it all the more terrifying. Sure, stimulants increase empathy in a normal brain, but if Brian abused them to the point that amphetamines feel like caffeine, then it probably only increases his irritability and rage. That's what his mother was like at the end. It always confused Cameron as to why someone would want a drug that always makes him feel worse. I got a better idea. Kim gasps as Brian Drag grabs him by the ear. No, no, stop. I can walk with you. I won't try to run. Ugh. Cameron senses the bear's amusement as if he were being pulled up by his ear again, and the coyote quickly st stifles his begging, realizing it might shift Brian's interest back to using Cameron for torture rather than his abilities. Pain had been blinding, but it's nothing, absolutely nothing, compared to what this bear has done to others. Oh, <sighs> uh, God. Brian, Cameron continues to settle and do a stumbling walk as Brian pulls him along, bent over and trying to see the ground in the darkness, all the while he tries to carefully follow the bear's rough on predictable movements. Every minute or so, Cameron looks forward and sees a scenario he's aiming for, still within reach, so he keeps walking. Meanwhile, a van emerges from the trees, parked a ways off the side of the road. Brian freezes, staring. Well, that's such a surprised laugh. Well, I'll be damned, the fucker got away. Who? Cody winces as Brian continues to hold him by his ear. Cameron hopes that he's talking about Devin, even though we can sense the presence of the younger bear just ahead of them. Cody would be glad to be wrong of his abilities, especially if it means Devin gets away. Cameron knows. I can't, I swear I shot him twice too, but then again he didn't do that weird jerking thing people do when you give him the kill shot, so I must have missed the second time. Well, maybe I just killed him with the first. Cameron looks for Brian is staring and sees the spot where Arturo must have been. Art stains covered with leaves along with what looks vomit and Cameron feels his own stomach churn at the sight. It's difficult to connect his, his outgoing, oblivious friend to the mess, and Cameron feels guilt mingle with his misery as he realizes what's happening to Artie is, is their fault. But he knows Artie is far away now, miles away, and Cameron silently encourages the cat to keep going, to do whatever he can to save them and himself, even though he's clearly in terrible shape. Cameron hopes Artie can hear him, even if he's awake right now. Cameron senses an ominous shift in the bear's motivation. Brian doesn't think that Artie will make it to the interstate, and he knows he should go looking for the cat. Everything is so fucked from the start. Three young men who likely have close family and friend groups, all three of them injured and beaten, and all, knowing, and all three knowing full well what Brian is capable of. There's no point to it anymore. Brian almost reverted to thinking to get away with all this somehow, but no. This is the end. Well, that's it, then. Figured I was getting close for a while now. The calm which, with which Brian accepts his nearing demise makes Br Cameron want to try to escape all over again. Why can't this bear just end it without taking them down with him? It's the end for him, not them. Can I see Devin? Cameron half-heartedly half smiles, hoping it might sway the bear, but he's not paying attention to Coyote. Ryan shakes his head at the sober vo version of himself, the version that actually did plan to let Cameron go, because why would he add to his problems by killing the Yote if he said the Yote could take them all? If said Yote could take them all away, that's what he tried that's why he tried to be nice to him, and then of course things got out of hand. Cameron begins to shake as, his sen as he senses Brian's the rouse like, okay, he's thinking about Cameron, about his baggie full of bath salts, and how, about how long it might take to find them in. Cameron blanches mentally, unsure of what that dark place full of death is, but he knows he does not want to go there. Where are you taking me? You're the psychic, figure it out. 
This one, the Coyote Bright and pulls Cameron towards the- No, 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 no. You put us- you have- okay, Howie, you have now put us in- brought- you now put us in Cameron's shoes, because I know exactly where we're going now. Fuck this. Okay, that's actually genius. Oh my god. Keeping his hold on the coyote, Brian pulls Cameron towards the van. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay, we're, we're with our, our, Arturo again. Um, it isn't long before Artie realizes that the lights along the interstate are actually a lot farther away than he had thought. He has no idea how long he's been walking, but it feels like at least an hour, and the road is maybe just a little closer. At this point, he's so weak, his movement's so uncoordinated, that deep down he knows his body's about to give up. Every dizzy spell, every wave of anxiety, it terrifies the cat that he might have another seizure, and if he does, he knows he won't be getting back up. Are you... Please... Cam? Around, hopefully. He'd probably start crying right now if Cameron just showed up, if only because he wouldn't be alone anymore. Then already sees a pair of headlights closer than the others. And it gets closer and closer. No! 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 No, 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 no. God! Why aren't you doing this? Fuck! <sighs> Already notes that the lights are coming right towards him, and he doesn't bother getting off the road, feeling like this must be a light at the end of the tunnel situation. The lights slow, and Artie hears the sound of an engine. The fuck are you? Artie hears Twitch recognizing the voice somewhere in his past. It would might as well be another life. It's hard to tell because they're screaming at him. Car door art. Car door opens and he just stands there lost in the light. Here's the fucking bar. So let's be just so fucking cool nice. I told you guys to fuck off. First the fucking bar is closed because some fucking cold. Now you stick a hill. You ain't a fuck with me. I just, I just want to cut and drink to cut and relax. Arturo furrows his brows. Never even heard of the curse word used in such a way. Figure starts to materialize in front of Arturo, and finally he recognizes him. Oh my God, Duke's back. What happened to you? Weasel stares at him and tilts his head to the side, squinting before reaching out and turning Arturo slightly by the shoulder. Shit, there's no way he couldn't be that fucking... Weasel trails off and then looks at Artie's face. Who did this? Artie reluctantly opens his mouth for some reason, feeling almost embarrassed about his condition. <laughs> Weasel stares at him with an odd look. Oh yeah, I said the bar. I was I was at the bar. It's closed. B B bear, bear, Brian. Turo nods and he regrets it immediately. He almost falls over. Damn, you're real fucked up, aren't you? Turo stares back at the weasel and does his expression like he's trying to decide something. It's not the right reaction to the situation, and already suddenly feels like he might be in danger, but he has no idea why. All he remembers is that this old man had floored Devin with two swings, so combined with his current state, he couldn't do a thing. And then the weasel seems to come out of whatever it is he was thinking about. Well, I'll be damned. This is it then, isn't it, that stupid motherfucker? All right, get in. We'll go into the hospital. Turo stumbles forward, and then once the re once the weasel realizes he's having trouble moving at all, he helps Arturo inside. As he does, the weasel sucks in a breath, grimacing. 
Jesus Christ, this is really making me not want to do what I'm going to have to do after this, but you know everything's going to end eventually. Turo isn't sure what the old weasel was talking about, but if he's taken to the hospital, he's at least on the right track. <laughs> Free end. Friends. Yeah, yeah, I'll call Peyton PD once I drop you off. Gotta make sure I can't be... Gotta make sure I can beat him back, though. Turo decides the weasel's acting strange, but... As the strange weasel starts to make three-point turn and drive back to the interstate, Turo is only grateful. He's done what he can, and now the rest is up to God. He can only pray. He prays for Devin, Cameron, Maria, and himself, because if he survives, he know the road and... Knows the road in front of him is long, fractured, and broken. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Duke, Duke actually helping someone. Duke helping someone. What is this? I mean, he's obviously doing it for... Selfish reasons, but still. Devin feels his body bouncing and shaking on a hard, metallic surface, occasionally leaning from side to side, feeling like he's laying down in a car, taking sharp turns. Burr opens his eyes, groaning. Dev? Cam. Is Cameron driving? Cutie has his own sedan that he drives, but usually if they're out together, it's in Devin's Jeep. First he thinks maybe he's given the wheel to the coyote so that he, he himself can get some rest, but they came in the jeep and Cameron can't drive standard, right? Come on, stop assuming things. Lately Cameron seems to bristle whenever he does. Lately is not ever since they got to Echo. Devin, I'm here. How are you doing? Cameron's concerned, gentle voice is clearly masking something strained and desperate underneath. Cameron, what? What is it? What's wrong? I told you he's all drugged up. But he can barely talk. Cam. Exactly. I already told y'all roof with him. He's less like black and owl. Anyway, it's wearing off. He's just tired. Is that blood? Why is he bleeding? Did it do it myself? Imagine what a mess we'd have if it wasn't drugged, right? Never trust a bear to stay put when you chain him up. Devin, can you hear me? Are you are you okay? Yeah. Yes. Then he's drifting back to sleep again. More sounds of driving on a rough road, gravel grinding under wheels and hitting the undercarriage. And he comes to again, it's stopped, and Devin realizes the van's doors are open. Looks like it did wear off just in time. Can I go to him, please? Devin sees that one of the Cameron's ears is twisted in the older bear's grass, the coyote's head tilted to the side, wincing as he tries to get up to look at Devin. The younger bear becomes very still, seeing his best friend being held by the worst person he's ever met. One of his soft, sensitive ears that Devin had played with countless times in the past is now twisted tightly onto itself. Brian's other paw yields a shotgun. On top of it all, Brian looks angrier than usual. In fact, he's looking at Cameron with an expression of utter contempt, all the while Cameron isn't paying attention to him at all, looking intently at Devin instead. Of course, fucking typical. I'm glad I saved this. Suddenly grabs the coyote and by the shoulders and turns Demer Cameron around to face him, to face away from Devin. Even so, there's no confusion as to what happens to Cameron next. Brian turns slightly away from Cameron and then spins and sends the back of his fist across the coyote's muzzle. The sound is so loud, Devin is shocked awake, adrenaline compensating for the sedative. First, Devin refuses to believe what he just saw, that a sound like that could be with Cameron's muzzle. Cody's head snaps to the right before he instantly starts to crumble, but Brian holds him up. Hey! Devin yells automatically, shot by what he just saw. He's never seen someone hit that hard in his entire life. 
and the silence that follows the distinct sound of something small clatters against the van as if a plastic bead had been thrown against the metal walls. Devin hears... Devin hears it land next to him, and looking down, he sees something long spinning in place before finally coming to a stop. It's thin... <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. It's thin and white and it starts wide, but it tapers to a sharp point. Tiffin only is going to focus up for it. Before he grunts, his camera lands on top of him, Brian even pushed him over. As he's looking down at the coyote and sees the blood beginning to seep from his mouth, Devin realizes the white thing is one of Cameron's teeth. The shocked anger overcomes the fear. Hey! Sense is seeming left Devin. Everything he's feeling and thinking condensed down to that one word that he screams to express his rage. Cam! Cam! Panic is making him breathe fast, so he tries to keep his chest from heaving to avoid bouncing Cameron's head. Brian hit him so hard, he definitely could have killed him. Makes it all the more terrifying as the way Cameron's body went limp. It had been so reminiscent of Artie's sudden collapse when he had suddenly lost his life. But Cameron is breathing, though it's in a terrible, snorting way. Yeah, me, baby. Can you hear me? Mannequin, his voice lowers to almost pitiful whine as he snares at the coat. He's twitching, his eyes half open, and his head turning back and forth slowly. Whoops, took out a bit more than I meant to. <laughs> Fuck that hurt. Ryan sneaks the paw he used to hit Brian as a bashing Cameron's muzzle made it sting. Tiffin's rage crescendos once more. Oh god, I have to. Oh, uh, I don't. I have to fucking channel this fucking emotion now. God damn it. Um. I, I'm. Um, okay. It's this fucking emotional whiplash, man. Brian, I will fucking kill you! Brian looks surprised for just a second and goes on grinning, enjoying the reaction as if he's watching a show. This only makes Devin angrier. <sighs> Fuck. I'll knock every tooth in your fucking head! I'll tear your throat out! Ow! Devin's voice weakens, break, then trails off into Brian's apparent glee at the younger bear's fury. Realizing that Cameron's ears are twitching at his shouting, Devin turns his attention back to Cameron's like Coyote lets out a low, rasping groan. Cameron, honey, are you, can you hear me? You can hear me, right? Cameron! While blood oozes out the coyote's nose and mouth, seeping into the fur and Devin's stomach inside. Devin tries to keep his sobbing and gasping into a minimum as Cameron's head continues to rest over his diaphragm. Cameron's eyes flutter and then he blinks and Devin can see the light of consciousness re under his eyes. Cam! Devin! Cameron grunts under his breath, lifting his head slightly. Briar looks bored, a catastrophe just created. Now he looks. Now he keeps looking over, at his, over his shoulder. Into the darkness that stretches behind him, shifting impatiently. Alright, make it quick, yo. We need to get moving. 
Don't you touch him, you could have broken his fucking neck! And his voice cracks and turns hoarse again. I mean, Viss bristles, finally reacting, and Devin turns his attention back to Cameron, getting to try and gently coax him into a state of consciousness. Come on, baby, can you hear me? Can you understand what I'm saying? Slowly, Cameron lifts his head, a mixture of blood and saliva connecting his lip to Devin's fur and a long strand. I'm okay. I'm fine. Sounds confused as he mumbles, trying to get up on ease unsteadily. No, stay still! No, get up. Didn't I tell you what I'd do to your bear if you don't? Then do it! Come over here and do it, you fucking coward! You fucking scum! Devin. Cameron's voice is calm, albeit quiet and weak, and the bear goes silent as he focuses back on the coyote. He has his head lifted, trying to focus on Devin's face. Who's feeling this right now? Question catches the bear by surprise. What? The mines, right? I'm going to the mines and I'm coming back for you. Cameron clasps a paw to his muscle, wincing hard as he shuts his eyes tight. What? What mines? Stay here! Devin's eyes well up with tears, seeing what the coyote is barely coherent, barely able to understand what's happening. Devin Cameron, then Cameron leans in to kiss the bear, again taking Cameron by Devin, again taking Devin by surprise. Immediately smells and tastes Cameron's blood, making the gorge rise in his throat. It reminds him of his predatory nightmares, but Cameron insists that Devin forces himself not to heave. He doesn't want to feel the gap where Cameron's lower left canine used to be, but the unevenness of his already swelling muscle, muzzle. As he forces himself to kiss back, he feels something else press against his lips. Something hard and oddly shaped, and Devin opens his muzzle, allowing the blood to flow into his mouth, but with it comes something else, and Devin realizes all at once that it's the key. Devin maneuvers the key into his muzzle as subtly as he can, hearing Brian sigh impatiently behind Cameron. It slides under his tongue, tiny in his comparatively large muzzle. Cameron whispers into Devin's ear, We're gonna go back home together, I promise. Where are you going, honey? Why the mines, honey, please? Devin can't keep the whining panic out of his voice, sounding like a cub, but managing to keep the words clear with a tiny key under his tongue. Devin just stares at Cameron as he pulls back, tears rolling down his cheeks. As this coyote crawls weakly to his feet and steadies himself against the wall of the van. Yeah, you're fine. Turns his gaze back to the furious, sobbing bear. See it, Doc. You were back in a little while, I promise. I, 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 I don't possess the mental ability to relay my emotions to you right now. I don't. I just don't. The emotions I have felt in the last fucking ten or so minutes have ranged so many spectrums I feel like I'm going insane. But whatever, I guess. Holy fucking shit. This is what happens when you build up characters and I and 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 you make the audience love them and then you put them in these scenarios. This is what happens. Genuine emotion, genuine fear, genuine concern. This is what fucking happens. And I have a rant that I'll say for the end, but un it doesn't have to do with the writing. It doesn't have to do with the writing. It's just to do with the fandom. But I'll save that for the end, because holy shit. Being knocked out, regaining consciousness, stumbling his way through the dark, all, in, all while on an untold amount of shrooms is harrowing. It's the only word Cameron feels is appropriate for this sensation. Harrowing. 
The world is more dreamlike than his dreams. This combination of disorienting factors leaves Cameron fumbling after a series of events immediately after he'd reached the old bear. Brian grabbed his paw, and suddenly they were moving swiftly through the desert before Cameron is pulled into a place that's cold and dark, lit, by, lit up dimly by an old electric lantern, its handle hanging from the barrel of Brian's shotgun. If Cameron thought his perception of time was fucked on we, now it's twisted over on itself. He's exhausted, not having eaten a proper meal in well over a day, and his throat is so dry he thinks he might be willing to drink Brian's drugged water. Each time Brian goes around to bend first, or his bulk obscures it, the lantern's light disappears and leaves Cameron in darkness. Each time that happens, brilliant red arcs crowd his vision. Who's in darkness? Oh my god. I hate it. Oh my god, it's fucking- they- Oh, you had to do it. You had to fucking do it, didn't you, artist? You had to be amazing. You had to be amazing, didn't you? God. I am. I'm in the darkness. Everything is in darkness. No, just me. Stop, fine, it'll make it worse. Came in surprised by the bear's sudden appearance. Where am I? Brian sighs heavily again. Doesn't matter. But... Cameron crumples up as something jabs him hard in the sternum, twisting on itself, feeling a black hole open in his chest. Sucks the rest of his body and attention into his canine, curls up on the hard dirt floor, whining and grunting. Finally, air returns to his lungs. As he does, he hears a snorting sound again. For a while, Cameron looks from position on the ground to see Brian on his knees, appearing to smell the stock of his shotgun. Then Cameron notices the white powder and understands what's happening. Cameron hears a familiar voice, one that he's sure he's hearing and not imagining. Don't snort at it. You're trying to coat your nasal cavity, not your fucking lungs. That's how my friends did it. And then your friends are fucking idiots. Brian looks up from his disappearing line of bat bath salts. Who are you talking to? Cameron quietly tries to hush Dylan, but Brian already heard them. Top of that, Brian doesn't need concern, but continues to state demands and can you stare at demands and answer? Um His name's Dylan. He's my ex, sorry we don't get along well. You'll get in some third man syndrome. Whenever I get real fucked up with too many drugs for too long, a person always shows up. I end up having a conversation with him and everything. Brian readjusts the way he's holding his lantern and gun and grabs Cameron's arm with the other. Yeah, you know, here it happens to people in survival situations too. Anyway, I'm too always too delirious to remember who, who the third man is. Yeah. Cameron can understand how Dylan isn't real, but this nightmare bear apparently is. Is he being tricked? All right, here's the deal. I'll stop hitting you as long as you smile and got it. Huh? Brian clenches his fist meaningfully. Cameron winces and quickly stretches his mouth into a large smile, even though it hurts to the point where the tears well up in his eyes. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize what you were talking about for a second. I remember now. Sure you do. Pathetic. That word. Cool. Brian keeps respect camera security remains quiet, keeping a smile plastered on his face. This experience is too much. All oh, this is too much. Just wants it to stop and do whatever this bear, this source of his torment wants, if it'll if it stops him from being hurt again. As I did bust the child's pretty good, huh? Mm. Every finishes the bear grabs his bed, they can muzzle one giant paw. Wait, please don't! <clears throat> Cameron cringes hard, tries his best to hold still. Eh, yeah, broke your toe too, swelled up a bit, but you're cuter than your cute with your face all messed up like that. Too bad, it's gonna look real ugly by tomorrow morning, not that it'll matter. Just hard to look at you now with that stupid scar. Ryan let's go and grabbed his shoulder instead, at the same time glancing at Cameron's shirt. You from some bridge down, Dimba City, you just picked up a Goodwill.
Always say when you're shopping at the Goodwill, never pick up clothes that have anything to do with a place. Folks, a few years back, I went to I go I took a Western sweatshirt from the Salvation Army and it falls along silently. Meanwhile, that third presence is shifting to something else, something a bit more familiar. Brian's getting shabby again from the second dose he took. Anyway, I heard that city's overrun with Antifa and all that. A true liberal hellscape, if there ever was one. Oh my fucking god, here we go. <coughs> Antifa's leftist, not liberal, but whatever. God. His mother falling behind them is holding his paw. Looking back, he can't see her clearly, but he knows it's her. It... It's okay. A lot of the time it's outside groups coming into the city and making trouble. Even sounds like her, defending the city they both grew up in despite its problems, despite its streets becoming a stage or the country's culture wars to physically play out. Even while they suffered on what, on what was supposed to be a, ba a liberal bastion lit up by the lights of tolerance and welfare, but instead glowing orange from burning cars and flashbangs. And yet they defended it because they both believed in its core principles. Now, though... Cameron looks behind himself while also looking back. He's taller than she is, and he's reminded of just how small she was. How small she'd seemed to him now if she'd survived. He would have saved her, too, if he could... If she could just held on a little longer. How much longer? Four or five years? Could she have held on that long? No, not with her having the amount she was using. And though Cameron doesn't want to admit it, it was her death that spurred him to make the first serious change in his life. His mom wasn't a good mom. All things considered, she shouldn't have ever had children. But how can he judge? She was just 17 years old, excited and in love, living out of a 70s Chevy van. But all that came to an end when he was born in December 1995. Jesus, okay... Then his abusive, probably schizophrenic father left and committed suicide sometime in the mid-2000s. But for a few months in 1995, his parents truly wanted to make a good life for him, and that feeling from that moment in time overwhelms Cameron. They wanted to make him happy, successful, and they both they truly thought he'd be the one to break the curse of poverty on both their families. And even though they wanted that for him, he especially wanted him to be happy, to have a family life, and a childhood that both his parents were, were only able to see other kids enjoy from afar. They tried. But it's the most typical love story for people like them. Because then, like in all those other, stor in all those other stories, things break, and then things settle. And the exact same before Devin. She should have taken more precautions. She left him alone in the trailer often, her medications and recreational drugs freely available for him to experiment while she was at work. He became an addict just like her, and he had to understand the baggage that comes with that label, that it's not just a craving or a desire for something. Everyone has that. No, it's about who you are as a person. A liar, a thief, a cheater. Someone will do anything to get whatever it is their de addiction demands. Anything to feel good. Whether it's pathetically checking all the coin dispensers in a casino once you've spent your life savings. Or pathetically combing through the carpet of whatever drug it is that you're starting to come down from. The only thing that saved him from that life and death was grades. Somehow, through all the substance abuse and neglect, he was a straight-A student, and that's what got him a partial scholarship to the University of Pueblo. And that's what got him out of the trailer park surrounding Bridgetown and into the, this state's flagship university. He used schools in his own state of better offers, but Pueblo was the most prestigious of the schools he got accepted into. A top 100 school with the best-ranked nursing and engineering programs in the region. That, and at the time, Karen wanted to be far away from Bridgetown, even if it meant the desert. And then he met Devin. She wasn't a good mom. But she was a great person, a wonderful person, and she did the best she could with what she had at the time. 
She brought him into chaotic, unstable life, a life that she saved multiple times. And while he occasionally wished his mother would have just let him die, now Cameron's only thankful. Well, most of his life was tough, the best the past five years have been better than he would have ever dreamed. Ever dear dreamed, dare to dream was possible. It was perfect up until yesterday when they got here. Tears run down his face, conflicted about how he should feel, but just knowing that he misses her, that he loves her, and that he hopes she's okay wherever she is. This third person squeezes his paw reassuringly. Cameron squeezes back and is comforted by the, by the feeling that for this moment he's sealed off from Brian and the town. It's just him and his mom walking through these mines. She tells him she's proud of him for graduating high school and college and she's happy he found Devin. She'd really be proud of him if she knew what he studied. If she was still around. They would have majored in business administration or something. What did you major in? A smile. Gentle voice from behind him, barely audible, and carried on the soft breeze that grows weaker the deeper they go under these tunnels. Uh, music theory. And what the hell is supposed to do with that? Teach? Automatic answer, the one he prepared for all his skeptical friends who are going into STEM-related fields. You a teacher? No, but that was my plan. Some plan. I mean, I didn't go into any debt, so I had financial freedom after I graduated. You know, you're pretty coherent for someone that's on that many shroom. No people would lose their minds. Oh, I am. I definitely am. It's... I don't know. I have more control than I did the first time I tried it. That camera feels like he's losing his mind right now, laughing, even though it makes every part of his body ache. Xanax is like magic when you panic. And anyway, what is it you do for a living? It all pay off. Which isn't by the tone in Brian's voice. He already knows the answer to that. Uh, customer support for Julian? Sad. Working for a country we, that we nuked twice back in the 80s. We used to beat up people working for companies like that. Camera's at a loss for word, but only for a moment. Oh, okay. Julian, the current market leader in smartphone, smartphone manufacturing, is Teovanese, and the Cody assumes that the bear is thinking of a certain other country in the same region. Either way, it's a strange and disturbing aside. That's just Brian, and sometimes with Brian, it's best for Cameron to just keep his mouth shut and also keep on smiling. So, why uh, music, you saying? Karen wishes the bear would stop asking them questions, making small talk like any of this is a routine part of their lives. But like Cody assumes bath salts make anyone talkative. Uh, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? Either you sing or you don't. Yeah, I sing, but I'm not very good. I mean, you better fucking be if you spent four years to learn. How about you singing out a side? Getting harder to keep the cheery facade as Cameron senses the cruel, malicious arousal rising up inside of Brian again. Second dose was making him do more than just talk too much. Uh, sure, just gotta think of one to sing. Anything you want to hear? I know a lot of 90s grunge and alternative rock. <laughs> You're a walking, talking stereotype, aren't you? You write your own music? I definitely tried. Subtle twitch of annoyance ripples through the air. You know, one thing that pisses me off is when someone's acting like an overly humble little bitch. Either you do or you don't. Either you're good at it or you're not. Either you offer something different or you, or you fucking don't. So which the fuck is it? I do I can. Just give me a second. Of course, the camera's muzzle turned down slightly. His composure almost crumbling. He's doing the best he can under the current situation, current circumstances, but he needs help. Devin, where are you? Brian's attitude shifts from one extreme to the next, making Karen feel a sort of emotional whiplash, but as long as he keeps him from getting hit, and more importantly, killed, then he's fine with that. Tentatively, Cameron starts to sing, choosing the song that got him the most attention. 
one that was played in moderate rotation at Mountain West Colleges along with a few in the Northwest, a song about his ex Dylan and their mutual love and hate for each other and about the abuse they used to hurl at each other, physical and mental, and finally about their breakup. Voices roughed and cracked, and, well, some of it is because he hasn't warmed up, and it's mostly due to having his throat crushed. Dehydration and screaming doesn't help either. But aside from jolting each time Brian pulls him in in a different, pulls him in a different direction, Cameron finds the melody and rhythm. As he does, becomes a bit more bold, singing louder until his voice carries through the tunnels. Brian still says nothing, and Cameron realizes he's listening intently. Well, this makes the coyote nervous. He knows it's better than the bear being angry, and mainly just needs to keep singing. Devin is in the mines with them, and he needs directions. Cameron just wishes it doesn't feel like he's leading Devin to his own demise. Fuck. Okay, there's a lot going on here. There's a fucking lot going on. Finding the entrance wasn't hard. Well, the main entrance had been blocked off with rebar before being filled and sealed with cement. He'd known about the side entrance from the supernatural forms he'd researched before coming here. So that's just common knowledge online, that there is a secret entrance to the mines. Okay. That and Cameron's blood was sprinkled here and there, and the scent of it spurred Devin on. That, that's, that explains it a bit more. Of course, it leads right to that entrance. He started unlocking his cuffs the second he thought Brian might be out of earshot. He'd fumble with the tiny, slippery key before freeing his wrist, revealing blood-crusted fur matted down to the broken skin. Now Devin moves to the dark, to the mines in complete darkness. Complete darkness, bruh. It's almost suffocating, almost panic-inducing that the scent of Cameron mixing with the foul odor of Brian pushes the younger bear deeper into the tunnels. The air feels intense, as if the mine itself is intent on seeing what happens next. Oh, it definitely is. It definitely fucking is. It's not gonna fall into another abyss. When the Lapita died by an accident, after the... After... One that happened after, after a tornado shredded their town, leveling the block across the street, but leaving their house mostly intact. As a 12-year-old, he just didn't think that it could happen. He had survived the actual disaster, but just as the relief started to set in, his, and his guards started to come down, it happened. He felt powerless in that situation. He knew that her death had happened because of him. But this time is different. He couldn't fight what took Lapita, but he can fight what's taking Cameron. Damn it. About ten minutes, though, Devin starts to become agitated, and nobody hear them any longer. And going by scent alone, Devin can tell that he's lost the trail. Shit! Shit, shit, shit! He sits through his teeth, trying to keep quiet in case Brian is somehow nearby, lying in wait. And then, somehow, he hears Cameron's singing voice. Devin goes completely still. He recognizes his boyfriend's voice anywhere, of course, but Cameron's style is different, having the qualities of a singer from the 50s while also while retaining a grunge-like roughness. Cody was heavily influenced by the black and white musicals his mother used to watch late at night. He was embarrassed about it after being critiqued in one of his vocal performance classes, and he'd been trying to change his technique when, he, when Devin first met him. But Devin always liked Cameron's voice, and it was due to Devin's urging that Cameron leaned into his style. That's an interesting combo. I kind of want to hear that, actually. Devin begins moving as fast as he can while staying quiet. He knocks his nose into a few walls and scrapes up his elbows and shoulders, but he keeps moving, simply trying to force his way in the direction of the voice. Then, just as he takes a few turns away, it stops. Then Cameron screams, and Devin drops all attempts at stealth. Cam! Brian! Calls out to let Brian know, he calls out to let Brian know he's, he, he's there, or at least distract him from the coyote. Then he barrels his way through darkness, trying to find what he's sure is the last turn. Why Brian has brought Cameron here, he doesn't know. He doesn't even know what, he, what he's going to do when he meets them. Well, anything. He'll do anything.
Ron's looking at Billboard distracted, starting to scan the tunnel with a tunnel wall before his eyes settle on what looks like a large crack run from the ceiling to the ground. Tamarin turns up his singing a notch, knowing that this is their destination, the end of the road. The old bear glances at him annoyed. This, for whatever reason, is what brings Brian out of his stimulant-induced fo- hyperfocus. That face just... It's really funny looking, but whatever. Brian finally realizes what's happening. It's only now that the old bear remembers Cameron's plan to take the key. Even Cameron forgot. But now a huge paw flies to his pocket, digging inside and realizing it's too late before he whirls on Cameron. Okay, no, not saying that. Cameron turns and, run, turns and runs, trying to take advantage of Brian letting, letting him go for those couple of seconds. So he pounds into Cameron's door back just to the right, and it feels like a cannonball being smashed through his body. Cameron is launched forward against the tunnel wall directly in front of him, and he tries to hold on to it, sliding down slightly as he stares straight up into the darkness. It's so dark that Cameron can't tell if the ceiling is a few feet above him or if it's, sim- if it's simply endless space full of glowing arches that stretch on forever. His eyes stay wide, his breath leaking out of his muzzle in a, lo- in a slow, high-pitched rasp, not wanting to believe the pain he feels spreading through his insides is real. He's on the ground, writhing and groaning on control, with electronic pain spiderwebs through his body. The blow his camp that Brian had delivered before and nothing compared to this. Cameron thrashes around in the dirt, desperate to find a way out of the hell. He's in hell. Who's in hell? He has to be. What are those red arches and why are flames spreading from his guts up into his lungs? Damn, you'll probably only piss blood after that one. Ryan's mock concerned voice snaps Karen back to the situation he's in and in the very back of his head, he realizes his trip is beginning its descent. Pain is still present, though, and it's not letting up. How can he feel pain if he's nothing? He's finally a breathing again, but each exhale is accompanied by a whining wheeze and voluntarily... Voluntarily, tears rolling down his face. Brian leans over him and the coyote cringes. No, stop, please! Brian pauses and just grabs Karen by the arm and yanks him up. Cameron lets out a horseless, breathless scream as his, as his aching body is forced to move again. It echoes around them before cutting off as a huge arm tightens around Cameron's throat. Cam, Brian! His voice is very close, maybe only a tunnel two away. Brian mumbles quietly next to Cameron's ear. Shut the fuck up right now, I'd ab- or I obliterate the kidney, got it? Feels a thread hovering over the left side of his back this time, and it could be shuts his muzzle, even though groans still force their way up, muffled behind his lips. This seems to at least satisfy Brian, and he drops the choke before shoving Cameron forward. First, Cameron is surprised that the bear didn't just hit him again, but Brian's distracted again. Devin's too close, and a few terrible plans go through the other bear, older bear's head that causes Bra- Cameron's already aching abdomen to lurch with nausea and fear. Brian considers waiting and ambushing Dev, but he quickly discards the idea as he realizes Cameron might try to warn Devin by making noise right as he reaches them. That's exactly what Cameron would do, and it means being beaten to death by Brian. Sighing again that nothing matters anymore, he pushes Cameron forward through the narrow opening, the passage becoming more tight until Brian has to turn sideways and struggle through and it, and it opens up. Oh my god, we're there, we're here, we're here. Wow. They actually they they captured they captured the the at the, the image, in the art. Um, I don't feel I don't feel good about that to be honest. I don't. It also looks way bigger, than I thought it was. But whatever. Cameron smells death. He instinctively backs up, right into Brian. No. No, 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 please don't do this. Like, I can't, I can't. 
can't finish his sentence. Brian Zick, Thomas felt pain that still seems unimaginable to Coyote. Knowing Devon is close behind them, Kara makes one last effort to turn and dodge around the bear, but the bear is far too large and he easily grabs up the coyote and throws them further into the hollow. Cameron comes up immediately trying to suppress his whines and whimpers. Brian, just wait a second, think about it, I can help you! Why did you bring me here in the first place? Brian gives Cameron his passionate look, but he does pause and then gives, Ka that gives Cameron some hope. And some time. Let me talk to them. Let me, let me see if I can reason with them. We both know that this, all of this is over. Cameron senses a slight shift in Brian's intentions as the bear begins to seriously consider Cameron's reasoning. I know you need my help. I can feel them. They want you, Brian, and they're waiting for you. I know what it can be like walking in circles for most of your life, making the same stupid mistakes, and knowing what you need to do to get better and just never doing it. Oh, yeah? But I finally did, and my life was almost perfect. Until I met you. So let's do it. Let's end this nightmare right now. Takes a deep breath and holds it. Entire mine, the entire town seems to hold its breath with him, and Cameron begins to understand how deeply entwined this bear is with this place, this entity that seems to be pulling all the strings. Cameron can feel the monolithic entity shift and turn, as if it, too, senses inevitable end. Brian is close to taking the Kyoti's offer, but it isn't meant to be, and Cameron, of course, knows that. Scuffling from the entrance announces Devon's arrival. Guess he's finally here. Just gotta brought my 10 gauge. I wanna make sure you got good power, power and bears are involved, eh? Karen watches in horror as the little bear opens up the shotgun before inserting the shell. Cameron's mind is blank as he automatically lunges at the huge bear, grabbing at the shotgun barrels as Brian snarls in rage. Everything's falling apart. You're spiraling. Devin shoves his block with a narrow passage, squeezing through the hollow on the other side. When he stumbles into the open space, Devin... Oh, it looks it looks different for him. Could that okay, that's a neat touch. When he stumbles into the open space, Devin spots Cameron immediately, the Cody being swung left and right as he fights with Brian over the shotgun. Cameron is covered in blood, tears matting the fur in his cheeks. The situation already a terrible one, but again his fear for Cameron turns to anger at Brian as he sees the bear throwing vicious crushing kicks at Cameron's lower body. Devin realizes this is it and he's no time to think. Devin charges up behind the older bear and bites deeply into the side of Brian's neck. Apparently biting someone than himself is a lot more effective and he feels his canine sink deep into his flesh beneath thick fur. Well, man is covered in a layer of protective padding just like himself, but the older bear clearly is a lot more of it. Still, Brian screams, high-pitched and full of fury. And Cameron is, Cameron is finally shooken loose from the shotgun, and Brian grabs the barrel with both paws before ramming the butt of the shotgun back into Devin's stomach. Younger Bear wretches and crumples over, but managed to grab the shotgun, holding on the stock tightly. Brian, clearly aware of how bad the situation could become for him, lets go of the shotgun so he can turn around and throw a knee up into Devin's hunched form, an inch above the navel, almost the exact spot he hit earlier. Devin feels as if his guts are flattened to his spine before liquefying, before it's actually lit him off the ground for half a second. Even though he lands on his feet, he immediately sinks to his knees, muzzle open wide as he can use it to battle for it with his own lungs, all while still trying to hold on to the shotgun. You're a damn man walking, boy, while well, on your knees anyway. What a surprise! Ryan fumbles, fumbles shakily to find the stock of the shop, and hidden somewhere under Devin's bulk, will simultaneously try and avoid the end of the barrel in case Devin's able to find the trigger. The attack went up to rattle Brian, even if short-lived. Devin curses himself, trying to move, knowing he probably can't win. But he needs to do something. Maybe it hurt Brian so bad that Cameron can at least get away. Get up! But he can't breathe. There's not much he can do to defend himself, let alone stand up. 
So Devin keeps his hold on the shotgun even as Brian starts trying to yank it from his weakened grasp and he's starting to succeed. Cam, run! Devin Rass, not sure where Cameron is right now, assuming he still might be on the ground after being kicked so many times. Brian squeals. Looking out from his double though up position. Up position, Devin sees Brian in front of him, bent over as well. A grizz grizzled bear grabbing him between his legs. As Brian sinks lower, Cameron appears, lowering a foot. Cody smiles with relief and joy at seeing Devin and seeing that he's got the shotgun. Cameron. Cameron seems so sure that they've won that he doesn't see Brian's quick recovery. The old bear are forcing himself up, murderous vengeance in his eyes as he runs at Cameron with an animalistic scream. Devin can only watch the huge bear charges at Cameron. No! <gasps> A much smaller character can only yelp and pan it before Brian smashes into him and crushes it against the wall. Devin hears a crunching sound as he gets his first tiny sip of air. Just as he hears Cameron's own air wheeze out in a yowl like moan. And then even more viciously than Devin attacked Brian, the old bear begins to maul Cameron. Brian bashes him left and right with blows, aimed at the Cody's face before Cameron collapses. Tear, Cameron begins to rip and tear the Cody with his claws. Devin begins to move, but it's slow, and he just wishes his lung would start working. Cameron tries to claw away from Brian, and Devin sees the horror mirrored in his boyfriend's eyes. And Brian comes down on him again, and Cameron throws his left elbow back the bear's face, only for Brian to sink his teeth into Cameron's forearm and elbow. And he twirls and tears, and Cameron lets a howling sound, his body twisting violently. He's on his back now, and he goes quiet, staring in shock at the wall he's laying perpendicular to. His eyes begin to roll up as Brian thrashes his head in a crunch. Okay. Cody can't make any sounds now, the breath seemingly knocked out of him by the pain. Devin has never heard Cameron make those feral pain sounds, not like this. And to see him in so much agony, he can't even breathe, can't even vocalize it. It gives Devin the final push he needs. Charges into Brian and the force knocks the old bear off the coyote. Devin has never seriously mauled someone in his entire life. But it's something that comes naturally to him and Brian, and... While well, he had play mauled people in the past, including Cameron, this is the first time he brings his claws, teeth, and muscle to full use. Straddling the older bear, Devin roars at Brian before lunging down. First, he bites Brian's neck again, but the front this time. Brian panics and bear raises his fist up into Devin's stomach, but the younger bear is tensed up this time, and the fist gets no further than the stomach muscles. Still, Brian's power is almost supernatural, and Devin lurches and grunts, folding over, an ache forming deep in his belly, but, his but this only makes him bite harder. Devin can feel that he's truly stunned the old bear, at least for now, so Brian takes his fist back and resorts to panicked shoves instead of actually trying to fight. And Brian Lee finally does claw it. In Brian, De Devin's face and eyes, the younger bear leans back and smashes his head into Brian's muzzle. Sound of it makes it makes indicates a broken snout, and Brian lets out another high pitched whine before screaming and trying to lunge up to bite Devin's neck. Devin leans back, just avoiding the teeth before smashing his head a second time into Brian's face. Then, as Brian lays dazed, Devin lays onto his snout three times, full force, trying to pound every bit of agony into Brian that the old bear had given all of them. It would be impossible, though. Still, Devin feels a savage satisfaction as he sees at least two of the old bear's yellow teeth roar out of his muzzle. Brian howls and rolls violently, finally dislodging the slightly smaller bear. Devin heaves for breath, watching as Brian comes up several feet away, crouching, and also heaving for breath. You fucking... You! Brian can barely form words, but not just because he's out of breath. His bitter hatred is evident, so mad that only frothy spit flies from his lips as he sputters. But then Brian's eyes flick to the right, and Devin remembers all at once that he left the gun there and focused on helping Cameron. The little bear moves, lightning fast, and he shoots off to the right, and Devin realizes Cameron is there too. Cameron, look out! 
Oh my god, we're- wow, we're jumping back, we're jumping, we're jumping into- okay, um, uh, Cameron laying in agony after Brian's vicious attack knows something is deeply wrong with his body. The crushing against the wall of the chamber had done it. The, the true pain, though, emanates from his left arm, and Cameron knows that it's mangled, broken, and useless. But he can still use his legs, and Cameron forces himself to get up and start moving for the shotgun, hearing the snarls and growls of the bears behind him. He does his best to stay quiet, but stifled grunts and small squeaks force their way out of his throat. As soon as he touches the shotgun, though, he hears Devin shout, Cameron, look! And again, the nightmare that is Brian is tearing at his body, pinning him to the wall, and Cameron screams in terror as a huge bear starts trying to bite his neck. Panic Kite is only is just able to get his unbroken arm up. It's maybe only three seconds before Devin is there, but it feels like an eternity. Cameron, considering how badly it might feel to die from his throat ripped out, Cameron's right arm is torn up as well since Brian isn't shaking his head this time. His bones at least remain intact. Then Devin wrenches the bigger bear off of him. Cameron struggles, tries to move, but it's useless. His body too beaten, broken, do anything aside from dragging himself away. And here's Brian, high pitched, squealing again, and this time it's genuinely terrified. Cameron looks over and sees that the old bear is now on his back with his arm in a sort of hold by Devin. Devin is laying on his back, Brian's arm pulled towards his chest. Devin's hips, cl Devin's hips close to older bear's shoulder as his, as his legs lock together at the ankles. Devin grunts and heaves with all his might, his huge, powerful body arcing toward the ceiling. Devin is intent on really hurting Brian this time, wanting to make sure he pays the old man back for Cameron's tooth and arm. So Brian focuses on destroying the other bear's arm. Bear bones are especially hard to break. Devin has never had a broken bone in his life, but the younger bear knows a thing or two about applying force. His dad watched MMA all the time, while he knows a little knows little about fighting, he knows why arm bars can be so devastating. But even as he leans back, bending the bear's big bear's arm over his inner thigh, only a few cracks are heard, but it's nothing serious. Devin needs the arm to have less resistance and more distance from the fulcrum. Locking his legs, it takes just a second to slam his foot into the old bear's jaw. Just a second, Brian goes limp, and Devin relocks his ankles before lifting the limp arm away from his chest, curling up. Then he heaves back on the arm again, arching hard while he twists his body. Tark! Now you're sinking like an engineer. As the catchphrase of one of Devin's old professors comes to his mind, a crack splits the air and Brian screams, somehow reach a new panicked pitch. Devin looks over to see Cameron has dragged himself a few feet away, leaving a dark, horrible blood trail smeared behind him. Devin stumbles over to him, hovering his paws over the Cody's neck. Baby, your neck, let me see it! <laughs> she didn't get me, let's go! Cameron's in no shape to run, so he groans as Devin lifts him into his arms, the bear starting to stumble toward the exit. Devin looks down at the Hillian arms, just now seeing how truly terrible Cameron's injuries are. Neither of you out here, just let me see. <laughs> just as Devin re remembers to keep an eye on, on Brian and his gun, the butt of the gun meets his side. Cameron hears the dull thud fall, the vib fall by the vibration to Devin's thick body. He feels the bear cringe as he sinks to his knees, huddled over Cameron. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit, I hate it. Okay, huge bear lifts up the shotgun he'd managed to keep a hold of. He struggles to hold it up with his left paw and his injured right arm dangles before he practically swings it up to prop his right elbow against the wall. A few pops coming from his shoulder as he does. Screams again when this happens with his fully functional wrist, he can now take steady aim. And with how hollow the narrow, with how narrow the hollow is, there's nowhere to go. Don't, don't you fucking move! You got that? This is over. I'm killing that yell in front of you. I'm gonna go rip your fucking arm off, boy. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! 
Tiffin can only wheeze in response, and Cameron holds on to him tightly as he's cradled in his arms. God, you fucking ruined it! He was perfectly fond of you, so that now he's fucking made to the point he's not even fuckable! Cameron's ability to see and think things is... feel things is fading, just as the effects of the shrooms are fading. Still, there's a bit left, and Cameron tries his best to use it. Devin's body begins trembling, and Cameron holds on to him more tightly. Devin's voice, still breathless, whispers into Cameron's ear. Honey, whatever happens, just play dead, okay? No matter what. Cameron suddenly turns. Devin watches as Cameron's face becomes a bouquet of red and the bear stumbles as the shot hits his arm as well. Devin looks down to see Cameron no longer with a face. Everything that used to make his face is splattered against the walls, which... and it still pours from... Cameron is gone. In shock, Devin looks at his arm and sees the white of bone shards, at first thinking it's his own, and then he sees a few of Cameron's sharp teeth also in his arm. Devin leans over Cameron's body, an expression of untold anguish on his face, as he starts to let a low, terrible growl that rises in pitched to a bearish howl. <sighs> Fuck you! Fuck you, you scud! Holy fucking shit! Fuck you! Fuck you! Holy fuck! <laughs> After looking forward, Cameron does the only thing he can think of. No! Cameron grabs the barrel and shoves up. The sound is so loud it instantly deafens Cameron, and though the ringing starts to subside, the hearing in his right ear doesn't come back. Cameron! Cameron! I'm fine, I'm fine! Cameron looks to O'Brien as the kick back from the 10 gauge hit him hard, squarely in the chest. Cameron can almost visualize the shock sent through that old, worn-out heart, already exhausted from the stimulant and the fight. The old bear, still on unsteady feet, stumbles back a bit more before hitting the wall and sliding down it to sit. O'Brien sits propped up against it, looking confused. Clutches his chest, rubbing it and grimacing. Shotgun is out of, out of, is on, is on, is on the ground, out of Brian's reach, and the old bear makes no move to get it. Fuck! Starts to try and get up, but falls back down. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Brian clutches his chest and stomach and groans. Oh no, is that it? Is this, is this it? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the... Brian slumps back, his body convulsing, then he thrashes about as if trying to escape something. He knocks over and smashes the electric lantern, crushing it under his weight. For several more seconds, they both listen to Brian's groaning, rasping, and snorting before it's silent. It's quiet for a little while longer, and Cam Cameron and Devin not daring to move. Brian had seemed invincible for so long, Cameron can't get himself to believe that it might be over. Devin whispers into Cameron's ear, Cameron, how do you feel? Cameron gives Devin a look that's full of love and exasperation, even if Devin can't see it right now. They both know he's badly fucked up. I think something ruptured. I, it, it feels all wrong. Cameron places his right paw on his own torso, wincing. Win Don't move, okay? I'll get us out. I'll, I'll, I'll get us out in no time. 
Devin starts to tentatively make his way forward. Just as Cameron is realizing how long this might actually take, possibly too long, there's internal bleeding, his vision flickers. What? 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 <laughs> Cameron stares at it and looks at Devin, wincing at the bear's bloodied and bruised face. But Devin doesn't react to the light, and, like, Cameron is the only one seeing it. But a shroom trip can't emit light no matter how hard you're tripping. I, I think I can see where to go. Just walk straight. How? Cameron starts to shake his head and stops at his next sense of pain of fire is his neck sends sends a pang of fiery pain down his back. I don't know, but I can see. Let's get out of here. Please. Cameron tries hard not to look at Brian's crumpled form against the side wall of the hollow. His wide eyes glinting from the gentle glow. Can't just tell me we are okay. Sure enough, as they leave, arch after arch appears and Cameron is confident they'll lead to the exit. These arches had tortured his mother, but this feels like his mother somehow. As they move, they both hear rustling sounds far behind them in the mines, but Brian is definitely dead, or at least had been when they left. So they keep moving, trying to keep quiet. Then, within an hour, real light. Daylight. Devin looks down at Cameron and winces just like Cameron did when he saw Devin's face. God, honey, we're gonna get you help and you're gonna get better, okay? But what about you? Do you feel okay? Cameron's voice is weaker than it was earlier and Cameron feels Devin quicken his pace. Fine. Devin says it sternly, sitting his jaw and Cameron stays quiet. Cameron, I'm sorry. And that's... the last time you're saying that to me, okay? I don't blame you for anything. I'm just so glad I met you. He listens to the bear's heartbeat steady for most of the journey, but getting faster as they get closer to the exit. Think I hear a helicopter? Maybe a megaphone? Shit, people come for us. The shock blew out my hearing, so I'm not, I'm really not sure. This trip is mostly over yet, yet these visions are so vivid. Cameron stares at this new arch and something about it feels different. Oh, mom. I found it. Uh, her arch. You're seeing arches? You know how something can happen that's so impactful it splits your life in two. You see your life as before and after that moment. It can be good or bad. Devin hesitates like he wants an answer to the question he just asked, but he lets it go for now. Of course. I think meeting you is the good divide in my life. I think what happened here and what's going to happen after, I think it's the bad divide. It had always been his mother's death, and it still is a divide. But this time, Cameron realizes he's been deeply effective, affected mentally. It's not something he can just recover from. Something's truly wrong with him. It's been the case for a long time, but now after this, something's been pushed over the edge. So, another divide. Think we're gonna be okay, Cameron. Devin, whatever happens after this, I love you. And I'm so happy I met you. Come on, you didn't have to say that first part. We made it. Okay, it's just, just a fork in the road. Cameron gasps. 
Oh, Devin. Artie is alive! He went to get his help, I think. I hope. What? How? I don't know. He got shot, but he got away. Brian was pissed. He's hurt, but I think he made it. Oh. Oh, that's... Devin's lips tremble and his face twists up slightly as he tries not to cry, but it's out of an incredible relief and happiness. Cameron doesn't tell him how bits of Artie are missing or that he can't sense them anymore, both because of his waning powers and because Artie is too far away. At least that's what he hopes. Cameron stares up at the arch, looking both beautiful and terrible at the same time. Raincoat Monster stands to the side as they pass, and this time Cameron doesn't think it's his old hallucination. Cardboard and unmoving, just like he's always been. But something about all of this, the way he's seen things, something has changed. It's not his psychic abilities, because now it's subtle and hardly noticeable again. No. Something else happens, and his mind feels wrong. Looking forward is no longer clear, but as Cameron uses the last of the psilocybin in his system to peer into their future, he becomes afraid of what he sees. So he just turns his muzzle slightly to Devin. Cameron, we are going to make it. Based on what he saw, Cameron isn't sure. Devin will stay, he was able to see that much, but should he? More than everything, they want to stay together, but if Cameron becomes a burden to Devin, he doesn't know how he can stay. He just hopes that Devin can still love him after this terrible change, and he hopes he can fight it, whatever it is. So Cameron leans his head against Devin's shoulders, smiling. In a mostly happy, but slightly sad way. Alright. Alright, now let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, that was a lot, and I, 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 um, I, I can't really formulate any thoughts right now, um, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so, the writing here was, as per usual, excellent, and how they found a way to have his psychic abilities actually um, work in a way that I enjoyed. So my previous worries um, are gone now, but um, 
Holy fucking shit. I don't think I've been this emotionally affected by VN since Echo. I mean, that's not saying much, but, you know, I mean, we're, we're dealing with some very strong fucking emotions here, and the next update's most likely going to be the final one. So, just the fact that this is almost over really makes me feel things, and I'm not okay about it. I'm really not okay right now. Um... I, I guess I uh, I guess we'll see what happens in the next update with um this dramatic and terrible change that Cameron can see. Uh, I can't really get my full thoughts right now because I'm still really emotional. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye, everybody.